Thank you for protection. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Give glory to the one who owns it. Give honor to the one who deserves honor. We celebrate you, Father. We lift you above all names, ancient of days. Blessed be your name, Lord. Terama shata hila basatra hile mo shantra vilibadea. Baradula hasantra he shuntre vede vedu shinta baba. There is no one like you, Daddy. No one. There is no one. No one anywhere comparable with you in glory, in might, in power, in majesty, in dominion, in kindness, in mercy, in favor. Who can we liken unto you, Lord? awesome God the one who had been from the beginning before the beginning began the one who will reign forever whenever finishes you will continue to reign we honor you Baba we lift you above all names Lord we adore your holy name the only one who is mighty thank you Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your favor to us. Thank you for making things to work for us. Thank you for protecting us from evil. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you. Thank you, ancient of days. The covenant we enjoy with you, we celebrate. The access we have to your throne, we celebrate. The goodness we enjoy from you. We celebrate, Lord. Thank you. We know it's not because we are good. It's just because you are the merciful. You said you will show mercy upon whom you will show mercy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for the privilege. Hmm. Bible says unto the Lord shall the guardian of his people be. You have come to your presence today to draw grace, to receive mercy in time of need. We have come to your throne where kindness is available. We have come to your throne to receive blessings again. And we do not take you for granted. Thank you, Daddy. Your throne is forever. And ever. And ever. And the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of righteousness. For thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Thank you, Daddy. I desire, Lord, that you fellowship with us by your Holy Spirit. That you grant us better houses this evening. I desire, Lord, that you open our eyes to see what we need to see. Open our spirit to see what we need to know. That you will strengthen us and enable us to enter into dominion and power. Thank you, ancient of days. We give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Please sit down in the presence of God. I want to welcome you to the presence of God this evening. We have come onto the throne of mercy where there is dominion, where there is power. We should not be casual about the presence of God. We must come with an expectation. Because the place you have come <laughs> is Mount Zion. You have come to the place where God himself is king and is in charge. That means you have come to touch the highest dimension of power. So we should come with that expectation. Anyhow, open your Bible to First Peter chapter 5. And I'm going to read from verse 5 to 9. First Peter chapter 5. And I will read from verse 5 to 9. It says, likewise, have you found it? Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Praise the Lord. Now, this is a prayer session, and I really want you to pray. Well, I want to pray. Prayer today will be focused upon yourself and not me, not our crusades, not even our nation, Nigeria. But you are going to pray for yourself. And my interest is upon, this, upon what the scripture we read spoke about in reference to you, particularly in verse 6. Let me read that verse 6 again. It says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. That's my area of emphasis. Humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. My emphasis in this prayer session is resting upon humility. Not humility towards men, but towards God. Of course, there are two dimensions of humility. You can talk about humility in reference to men, to people. But you can also be talking about humility towards God. So the humility towards God is my area of interest. But first, if you pay attention to what he said in verse 5, where he said that God resists the proud. God resists the proud. You know, there are some salient things in scriptures that we often overlook. And he always affects our prayers, affects our destiny affect us in every way 
that scripture said, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. What does it mean to resist somebody? Well, maybe I may not be able to do an, uh, a teaching on resist, resistance. But I think I can say that it means God works against them. God, it means God works against the proud. Because when you say you resist them, how does it mean that he resists them? At least we know that it means that he's working against them. Which means, if you are proud, you are going to be experiencing the hand of God knocking off your blessing. It means you are going to be experiencing difficulties that are coming from God to you. And you will think it's the devil that is fighting with you. And you'll be casting out devils and all of that. You'll be going from prophet to prophet for special impartation. And yet, you'll be getting nothing. Because God resists the proud. And he gives grace to the humble. Now, what is grace that he gives to the humble? That is assistance, enablement, resources, help to the humble. But the one who is arrogant, who is proud, God resists them. Did you pay attention to something about the ministry of Jesus? You know, there, there was a time I was studying, you know, every time I'm studying something about Jesus. But there was some time I was looking at Jesus' relationship with the, with the Pharisees, the scribes, the Pharisees, the, the, the Sadducees, all of them. How does Jesus behave to them? Jesus was always kind to children. Let's bring children to me. Let them bring children to me. Don't, de- don't, don't deny them. For the kingdom of God is like there, like them or something. He's always eager to have children and bless them. Oh, when the crowd comes, he's always merciful towards them. He said they are like sheep without shepherds. So he's always merciful and he's ministering to them and blessing them. How does he relate to sinners? Merciful. Said the one who never committed sin, let him throw the first stone. He would defend them. He would take care of them. He would visit them. He would eat in their house. But how does he relate to the scribes and Pharisees? He was always hostile to them. In fact, sometimes when Jesus is talking to them, you will be on the edge. Yeah, ah, why now? <laughs> That's too much. And not him alone. Even John. They came to meet John for baptism. How did he answer them? He said, you brood of vipers who have warned you to... He was always... They are always hostile towards them. Why? Arrogance. Proud. Pride. He hates it. God hates pride. Mm-mm, he doesn't like it. So this scripture is talking about us being humble in our relationship to the Lord. Unto the Lord. And we are not doing a teaching on it. But I need to let you know what we are praying about. The question is, what does it mean to be humble towards God? Does it mean that when I'm coming to church, I must wear a particular kind of dress and cover my head, cover everything? Is that what what it means to be humble towards God? Or that when I come to church, I must not fat? Is that what it means to be humble towards God? Or whenever I'm uh, praying, I must kneel down or prostrate on the floor. Is that what it means to be humble towards God? 
Well, I think I know that you can kneel down and be arrogant. I know that you can lie down for straight before, before God and still uh, be arrogant. There are three dimensions that I want us to pay attention to. And they will define the prayers we are going to pray. There are three major points I want to give you about being humble before the Lord. Number one, acknowledging the Lord. Acknowledging the Lord. Knowing that He is everything to you. Acknowledging Him. Not just assenting. You just assent that, yes, God, there's somebody called God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's God. And I respect Him. Mm-mm. To acknowledge Him, Him means to recognize that without him, you cannot do anything. And to put it into manifestation. That I know I cannot do without him. Not that I just know it, but I even say it to him. And, I, and you do it genuinely from your heart. Knowing that you cannot do without God. That's what it means to acknowledge him. Oh, if not for God in my life, I wouldn't have reached the level where I am today. That's, mean, that's what it means to, be, to acknowledge him. Remember that rich, I mean that, that farmer, that man whose land yielded abundantly. And the Bible said he thought within himself, what will I do? Since I have so much of harvest. He said, this is what I will do. I will break down this barn and build a bigger one. And I will say to my soul, rejoice. For you have so much that you have laid upon many years. Rest and celebrate. And the Lord said, This day, you fool, this day your soul shall be demanded from you. Why? Because he did not acknowledge God. He didn't even recognize that it was God that did it for him. He thought it was his strength over the years. Ah! Look at that. Look at, look, at, look at my land. Look at my house. Look at, look at this. Look at that. Ah, ah. I have tried though. No, I mean, I, me too, I know. All this hard, hard labor. Ah, I try. Oh. Is it true that he did not walk? I mean, is it false that he walked? Let's put it that way. Of course, it, it's not false. He must have labored to have what he had. But is he the only one laboring? Of course, there are many other people who have labored. It's not about your labor. It's about help from above. When a man labors and you are able to gather, it is help from above. And when you gather and you have what you gather, because you can gather and the thing will not stay. Huh? There are terrible things that can happen to human beings. And you lose all the things you think you are gathering. One of the things you need to do when you, are, you want to acknowledge God is you think again. Look around you. Just look around you. Look at what you have been able to accomplish. Look at what has happened in your life. And look at other people around you. Why is it that theirs is not as good as yours? Then you will know that it's God who has helped you. 
There are people who are more intelligent than you are. There are people who are better connected than you are. There are people who know what to do, but they just cannot do it. I asked after a lady we were on campus together. And I was told that as soon as we left the university, she lost her mind. As soon as she left the university, she lost her mind. And she disappeared like that. She just lost her mind. Since then, I've been trying to locate her. Nobody has any contact about her. She just disappeared. And you think you are intelligent. There are people who are more intelligent than you are. Let's remember to acknowledge him all the time. It is arrogance of spirit that makes you forget about God. That makes you to forget the help of God in your life. We must acknowledge him. That is the first dimension of humility. And that's where we are going to start tonight. We are going to just acknowledge the Lord. I think that's the way I will go. When I mention one point, we will pray. And then I will go to the second one. And then we pray on that again. Then I will go to the third one. It's just three of them. The one I'm sharing now is acknowledge him. So the first thing I want you to do is identify the blessings and favor of God in your life. And i like you to just use it to talk to God. And say it to God. And tell him what he has done in your life. The Bible says the heavens are speaking about the goodness of God. Day on today. Every day is talking of the mercy of God. You too talk of the mercy of God. Tell him. You can rise up and walk. Walk around if you like. Huh? Just acknowledge the goodness of God in your life. Acknowledge him. I never, I, never, I never prayed to have a child. My children just came when I, when, they wanted, when I wanted them to come. I didn't need to pray any special prayer to have any child. Is it because I'm a special person? No, it's your mercy, Lord. I want to give thanks to you. I didn't need to ask for a boy. You gave me two. I didn't need to look for a girl. You gave me one. I didn't need to beg before I had my wife. Wonderful people you put in my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. I want to thank you for mercy. Thank you for provisions. Thank you for enablement in all my life. I went to school. You went with me. You took care of me in all details of my life. I had some of the best education, some of the best lecturers in the world. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you for your mercy in my life. Look at the dimension of provision. You have been so kind. There are plenty of people who wanted to go to school, but they couldn't go because they didn't have financial power. Thank you, ancient of days. I went to school because I had a brain that could accommodate, accommodate uh, education. There are kids, there were many who were my age mates who couldn't accommodate education because of one affliction or another. Thank you for your kindness in my own life. Look at all the provisions you have put in my life today. It's because things are working for me that I'm able to stand before your throne. It's because things are working for me that I'm able to talk to you, Lord. Thank you, ancient of days. I remember what I read about Job and, and, the, and, and, and the devil. How the devil said, why will he not praise you? Why will he not be nice? Why will he not do your biddings when you have put your edge around him? And that's the truth. If not for your edge around me. If not for your edge all around me, the devil will have made a mince meal of me. Thank you, Almighty Father. Agbara Amiko. 
Agbara mi ko o anu re mori gba wi wa laye mi lo ni o agbara mi ko o agbara mi ko agbara olorun ni agbara mi ko o Anu re mori gba wi wa laye mi lo ni o agbara mi ko o nse jesu to fi fe la da mi si opolopo lo ti ku ti won ti fi lebora Oh, one in a new re, O to fife la da mi si, O go in yi o la, Lo ye o me sa ya, Je ma mama u na hele gada isha ne ne be la muna ye na ya hele si da ye, Eji de je ba u malabara na be u nubara ni akane ya hele gade u si da ye, Ale ni mana na mene ni muna ilara na ina ye ni gedo do hidu ya gada ye Ala bala bele ma usara ni di hamu sheda ye I thank you Lord, I thank you Lord Ancient of this, I thank you Lord I thank you Lord, I thank you Lord Give our fly, I thank you Lord Nikama unusa na ye nembo ya elege unuye Ajuna jole ele marana balolo maranu berani O shane malele marani wone Ado meso barana bate yone bashani eke idu ye dede Edu adabata ina jere jebele ma utere niye Igale gode nuzana bayana ba une bani bani do Omara bala kata sa hine jede jede humara ni ne uba ni gada hile ne usuda ye. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, giver of life. In Jesus' name, we pray. We will still give thanks to God. You know, I was I was watching something on the news. I mean, in the. On, on, I, was, I saw something online. A man who spent 30 years, is it 30 years? or I can't remember whether 30 or 15 years of his life in jail. For a, a sin he didn't commit. For this 30 years. Because he was coming out of jail an old man. But then they have discovered that what they, they arrested him for, he was not the one who did it. Not in Nigeria. In America. Hello? Which is to show you that not only in Nigeria that kind of thing happens. It happens here a lot, we know. Of course you know now. Don't you know? Ah, There are plenty of people who are just going on the road and they were arrested. And it will be in police custody 10 years, 15 years. I was listening to one case recently. One young man in Osh Oshogbo somewhere there. When they were about to do the good luck Jonathan election. They were just watching television. And police just came and carried them. And they you know, some people pay money, but he didn't have money to pay. And they accused him of being one of the people who went to kill some people somewhere. And he said for, the, for that number of years, they have been awaiting trial. You don't know, you don't know med, uh, legal issues. You know awaiting trial. They have not even gone to court. Since that time, until recently, somebody just went there and released them and released him. 
because they found out that he doesn't know anything at all. Since good luck, Jonathan, you know, Jonathan has run, had done his uh, regime and finished. Another president has come and spent eight years. He was there, nothing happened to you. No evil before you. Nobody is accusing you wrongly. You are not suffering. You are not in the hospital. Things are working for you. Give thanks to God once more. Acknowledge him for his goodness in your life. I celebrate you ancient of days. That makes all things to work for me. That makes favor to come in my direction. I want to thank you Lord. I want to celebrate you. The only one who is mighty. The only one who is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to glorify your glorious name. Rabba Sata Hili Bashatra Vili Masampra Hili Gedo Shateda. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, you are Lord. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you, you are Lord. Muyi oh, muyi oh. Oye oh oh oluwa Oye oh oh Oye oh oh Oye oh oh oluwa Every project I want to accomplish I do it easily because of strength from above. Every journey I undertake, I return. Every journey, the moment I set out, I know I will return. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There are some people who have been lost for 10 years, 15 years. They are still seeking for them. Thank you, ancient of this. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. You know, some of us are even angry with God. Because maybe something you wanted have not been done. Like some of you are angry that Asu is on strike and because of that you cannot go to school. Say, hey, when, 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 when we want life, move forward now. Uh, because as we don't strike. You are angry with God? <laughs> what if you are spending that time in the hospital? What if you are dead before they resume? Oh, okay. Assuming that you are in school and, they have, and, and you have died. You know, sometimes we need to ask for mercy. Mercy that I had been complaining, Lord. I'm sorry that I've been complaining. Some of us who complain about your child, you say, hey, this child, he, he hasn't done something. I will come out on one month until you repeat. Some are eager to have a child. One woman was talking to me one day. He said, if God will just give me a child and let the child die the following day, I will say, praise the Lord. That I will just at least have one child of my own. Maybe you need to ask for mercy that you have not been acknowledging God enough. Tell him, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I've not been acknowledging you enough before. Ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. It is the fool that says that God has not done well in his life. That's what it means that the fool says there is no God. 
No, the, the fool doesn't normally say there's no God like that. He will just say, God, what has God done for me? It is the fool that says, what has God done for me? I am sorry that I have not been acknowledging you enough, Lord. I am sorry that I have not been honoring you enough, Lord. Have mercy upon me, ancient of days. I have been taking you for granted. Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry, you. You are angry because something you are asking for has not happened. Why don't you thank God that you have mouth to ask? Why don't you thank God that you have time to be able to stand before God? You even have access to speak to God. Who are you? Ask for mercy for the way you have taken God for, for granted. I acknowledge you today, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The third aspect of this acknowledging God you know without God you can never attain your destination of glory the place God is taking you to you can never get there your destiny can never be accomplished unless God makes it possible for you do you agree with me and so you need to now say that to God you tell him how you need him Lord I need you that's the third aspect of acknowledging God. You, you tell him how you need him. Lord, I need you in my life. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. Oh, Lord. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. Oh Lord, sing it once more. Oh Lord, I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. Oh Lord, oh Lord. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you, oh Lord. Now in a few minutes, I'd like you to tell God how you need him. How you desperately need him. Tell him, tell him, let him know. Abraham did something and God said, now I know. Don't think he know. Say it to him. I need you, Lord, every day of my life. I can't do anything without you. What can I ever accomplish in life without you? What can I ever achieve in life without you? If you don't protect me, the devil will destroy me. If you don't help me, I cannot get to my destination of glory. Lord, I need you. I acknowledge you as my strength. I acknowledge you as my help, the only one that helped me. Men, we fail. Men, we fail. You are the only one who does not fail. You have loved me from the beginning of my life. You are still loving me till today. And you will still be loving me forever. Father, I acknowledge you as my source, my strength, my help the owner of all things I need you Lord I need you Lord <laughs> I need you Lord I need you Lord I need you Lord I need you Lord I need you every day 
I need you, I need you, oh Lord. I need you, Lord, ancient of days. I need you, Lord. 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 I need you, I need you every day. Hmm. Kasa tahila shatayaba. Marato shekele mambra sahile broni shatabali. Rekopo supreni akashaitra laba supreni. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Sit down a little while. Let's see if we can do number two. The second thing is you must seek him in every way particularly in prayers you know i'm talking about being humble before the lord in case you have forgotten let me remind you what we are talking about being humble before the lord and i said the first thing is you must acknowledge him the second point is you must seek him in every way particularly in prayers I wonder how you can spend a whole day of 24 hours without having any time for God. No prayers. No study of his words. Ah, ah. 24 hours and it will pass. And you didn't just remember him at all. It shows that you are arrogant. That means you think you can do it without him. If you know that you need him, you will have time for him. You will create time for him. Many of us won't even come to church for service on service days. And those who come, we come late. You give every other thing attention. And God, you, you relegated. You never go late to your class. You never go late. You never go late to your work because there's punishment for all of those. That shows you who is important to you. It shows you that those things are more important than God. Some of us could spend 10 hours with the television in a day. Not even in a day. At a stretch. You just sit there and you are watching. Orioka number one. You watch Orioka number two. Orioka Abinyoka Deni. Ipakoka, whatever oka. Number three. Number five. And you say, Oh, they have not done number six. I want to see it. That shows you what is important to you. When it is time to study the Bible, they say, let us read the word of God. And you pick it like this, you have slept off. When you are watching a yoka, you did not sleep off. Or they say, let us pray. As they begin to pray like this, you are yawning. <sighs> Praise God. And you don't see anything wrong in it. In fact, some of us, when you come to church like this, you now do your, you now knock off your head by like this. You say, "I'm not sleeping. I'm just listening very well." It shows you what is important to you. You cannot spend time with God in a place of prayer. It shows that you you are not humble towards God. How do you treat God? How do you how, how do you rate God? Some of us who come to the presence of God, you, that is in the fellowship like this, 
and they, 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 maybe they have said they will spend two hours and the thing stretch a little bit. And then you are complaining, you are making all kinds of comments because you spent a little time extra in the presence of God. It shows you what is important in your life. You can, some of us, you can meet your friend on the road like this. And you, you didn't say you were going to meet on the road. You just passing by and you met. And there, in that place, you can be standing there for two hours, three hours. Uh-huh. There's something I wanted to tell you. He will tell you. And then you two remember something you want to tell her. And you tell her. And then you remember another something that somebody tells you, somebody that you need to know. And then you continue. And you continue. One hour has gone. Two hours has gone. You are standing. Home. But if it is a prayer meeting and you, they say you should stand up for prayer. Say, oh, it's like giving us headache. I remember once our service ended a little late. Later than we would normally do. In a church that we had plenty of military officers. And there was one of them that came to see me after, after the service. And to start a conversation, I apologized to him. I said, ah, Major, sorry oh, that the service ended uh, quite late today. Oh. He said, ah, Pastor, you are apologizing to me. Ah, please, please don't kill me. Oh. He said, last weekend, Major General Soso and so came to town. Major General Soso and so time came to town. And I was told to go and be the one to be with him. You know, they would normally have a top officer to serve them. So he went to stay with him in the hotel. He said he will resume 5 a.m. And he will leave 12 midnight when the man goes to bed. 5 tomorrow morning, he must be back again. He must be there before the man wakes up. The man must not wake up and he has not come. Now, he is a major, not a, not a, not a lance corporal, not a recruit. He has to chaperone this one. Resuming 5 a.m., closing 12 midnight. He said, I had to be listening to all the silly jokes the man was cracking. And who born you not to laugh when the man is cracking joke? So even when the joke is silly, you still laugh. He said, now we have spent three hours in the presence of God. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are apologizing to me. Please don't kill me, Pastor. How, what do you rate important in your life? We must seek him. He is the most important person in our life. That's what it means to be humble towards God. It means to know that he is number one in your life. He is the most important person. Give him attention. If you can spend money on other things, you must spend money on God also. There are some of us who can't ever buy Bible. They have to give you. You can't buy it. They have to give you. Yeah, my Bible has spoiled. And I don't have another one. Somebody has to buy it for you. Huh? You can't, you can't invest money to, 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 to even download message. To even listen to it shows you how important God is to you. Because you still download all that rubbish. There are plenty of rubbish that you are wasting your money on. But you cannot spend it on the things of God. Number two, you must seek him in every way. You must seek the Lord as the most important thing in your life. The most important thing. That's the second dimension of humility unto God. And the prayer I want you to pray from that is that from today, I will always seek you, Lord. 
Do you understand? I, I am saying these things to you. I, don't, I know you have not been doing it properly before. But you can make a determination. So the first prayer you are going to pray there is from today, Lord, I will seek you. I want to seek you more. Give attention to you in my life. You want to rise up and pray that prayer? Yes, let's, let's rise up. You are, if you are that important, you have said God is that important to you, then you must be ready to invest time to him. I will seek you from today. I want to have more of you. More of you. More of you. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. I want to seek you more. I want to seek you more. If there are 24 hours in the day, it shouldn't be difficult for me to get one hour to pray every day. There are 24 hours in the day. I want to give you more attention. More, more attention. More attention, Lord. More attention, Lord. I want to give you more attention from today. Mashila bida husa kragado shekataya. Emma tora tosa hela gragato shetaye. I will give you more attention. I will give more time to you, Lord. Every day of my life, I will seek you, Lord. I will seek you, Lord. I will seek you, Lord. David said, I was glad when they said, Let us go to the house of the Lord. That will become my delight now. It will be my delight to spend time with you. It will be my delight to stay in your presence, Lord. It will be my delight, Lord, to spend time with you, Lord. It will be my delight. It will be my delight, Lord. It will be my delight. It will be my delight. From today, it will be my delight, Lord, to spend time with you. Mashela Bafra de Sofredie Kasunda. From today, I'll give you more attention. From today, Lord. Ah, I'll give you more attention, Lord. I'll give you more attention in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you praying this prayer like I expect? Number two, you are going to say, tell God that from today, nothing will be more important than you in my life. There shall be nothing more important than you in my life. Can you turn that to prayer? Nothing will be more important than you, Lord, in my life. Nothing, nothing will be more important than you. My phone will not be more important than you. My properties will not be more important than you in my life. My relationships will not be more important than you, Lord. Starting from today, nothing will be more important than you. Money will not be more important than you, Lord. From today. Kashele mabrata saida kishantriba. Nothing will be more important than you. Nothing will be more important in my life than you. In the name of Jesus. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing will be more important. Not my relationships. Not my money. Not property. Not even my phone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are still going to take that prayer once more. You know, some of us, your phone is like your life now. When you are waking up, the first thing you pick up is what? Your phone. Phone. That's, that had become the God of this generation. Everybody, phone, 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 phone. Me, a man in London City, he's walking on the road and he's pressing, pressing the phone. He's driving vehicle, he's pressing phone. 
and it has become a lord over you. Even in the house of God, phone. When you are praying and your phone rings, what do you do? We quickly forget. You forget that you were praying. It shows that that thing has become lord in your life. You are still going to pray that prayer once more. From today, nothing. Not my phone. Not my television. Nothing will be more important than you, Lord. There are some of us talking about not your long. There shall be nothing more important than God in my life. Can you just turn that to prayer once more? From today, I humble myself before you, Lord. You are going to be the most important person in my life. My phone will not be more important. My vehicle will not be more important. My property will not be more important. My money will not be more important. Money will not be more important than you in my life. Talk to God. Talk to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sit down. Let me do number three. I said, I'm sharing with you on humility before the Lord. And that's what we are praying about. And I said, number one, acknowledge the Lord. Number two, seek him with all your strength. And then number three, submit to him. Submit to him. So, you submit to the Lord. And that could manifest in many ways. When, you, when we talk of submitting to God, it means you recognize that He is ahead of you. You recognize that He's your senior partner. You recognize that He's in charge. It's, that's what it means to be humble before God. A, you listen to his opinion through his words. What does his word say? You listen to it. If you recognize him as the number one person in your life, then you listen to his opinion on every matter. So you're going to pray as you are seated. From today, I will give attention to reading, studying, and listening to the word of God. Can you pray that prayer? From today, I will give attention to studying, reading, listening to the word of God. I will give attention to it. I will give attention to the word of God. He told Joshua, he said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. It must not depart. You must always be listening and saying it and let it be in your life. Eh? The word, the word, that word, which is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edges sword. I will give it attention in my life. More than, more than it really are here. More than anything that anybody is saying on television. More than anybody else. More than anybody's opinion. The word of God, I will give it more attention. I will give attention to your word. Reading it, studying it, and listening to your words. I will give it attention from today. I will give it attention from today. You know, Lord, I promise to do this. I promise to do this. I promise I commit myself to give attention to your word. I want to give attention to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, giving attention to the word of God can be challenging. Depending on the kind of work you do. Some of us, you wake up early in the morning and you are on the road already. You don't have time to sit down and read. You say, okay, I will read when I come back. By the time you come back, you are so tired. You say you want to read, you doze off. So how do you give attention to the word of God? There are Bible passages that are read. That are audible... Uh, Audible, how do you call it now? Audio, audio Bible. 
You can put it on your phone. You can put it on your vehicle. While you are driving, the Bible is being read to you. You will still hear the word of God. As you are walking in the kitchen, your Bible is playing on your, on your phone or whatever. You are giving attention to the word of God. You are meditating on it as you are walking. Because I can't ask you not to walk home. Because I can't feed you, can I? Huh? <laughs> I can't feed you, I can't feed you. You must walk. In fact, God wants us to walk. But while you are walking, you give attention to the word of God. Sometimes, while you are, you, you play it as, some of you, you like playing something when you are sleeping. Instead of playing all those wanya, 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 wanya things, play the, the word of God. Let it be speaking into your spirit. And you are meditating on it as you sleep off. And the moment you wake up, you pick it up again. Give attention to the word of God. B, don't just read it. Take his word as Lord for your life. That's humility towards God. Take his word as law for your life. Don't laugh at it. Don't ignore his words. When the Bible says something that you find ridiculous, the reason why it is ridiculous to you is because you are far away from the level of the word. So you catch up with it and go at its level. And then you become a grown-up believer. The more you catch up with the word, the more you are growing. When you say people are growing in the faith, they say you are enlarging. What enlarges you? The word of God. The reason why, you are, why they say you are, you are a baby in the Lord is because you have not caught up with the word of God. The more you catch up with the word of God, the more mature you become. The word of God is life. It's your enlargement. So, as you are reading the word, you must not ignore it. You must put it to practice as law for your life. Everything I read in the Bible is law. I must follow it. So, you are going to pray. From today, your word will become the lamp to my feet. And I will always obey them. Can you pray that prayer? Can you pray that prayer? From today... Your word, Lord, will become law in my life. It will be the lamp unto my feet. And I will always obey your word. I will always obey your word. I will never argue or laugh at your word again. I will obey. I will live my life by your word. Starting from today. Every day of my life. I receive grace to do so. I receive grace to do so. I receive grace to do so. I humble myself under your word. That your word will become the lamp unto my feet. That your word will become the instruction of my life. That your word will become the guardians of my life. Starting from today. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. C3C. Be quick to respond to the word in obedience. Now, it's not enough that you obey. How quick do you respond? Some of us, you are so arrogant that you'll be fighting. You say, no, uh, uh, how can God say that? Uh, uh, and you are fighting with God. And then maybe after three years that you have been hearing it, you now obey. You are still arrogant. You are not humble. The, a, a humble heart towards God is the heart that is quick to respond quick to respond to the word of god so you're going to pray again from today i will be quick to obey your word i will be quick to obey your instructions anything you tell me i will do it immediately even when i don't understand why i will still do it can you pray that prayer are you praying give me grace to be quick to obey quick to respond to your word that as soon as I hear, as soon as I know your instructions, I will be quick to do them. Give me the grace to do so. Pray. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Grace to be quick to obey your word. Grace to be quick to follow your word. Give it to me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. That's what makes maturity in the faith. 
That's what makes me a, a frontliner in things of God. Give me grace to do it. Give me grace. In Jesus' name we pray. I don't know if you are with me. I'm trying to share something important with you. And I need you to understand it. You are not... Your, the way men measure us is not the way God measures us. Oh, people look at you. Oh, people look at you. And you say, ah, he's a Jim Jim brother. He's not really like that. He's not Jim Jim. We are to the poor Morinko. We are to the poor old woman for your friend last day. That's not what God sees and calls you, Jim Jim. How quick are you in obeying the word of God? How swift do you listen to instruction? God has spoken. Somebody said, The Lord has spoken once. Twice I have heard. Twice I have heard. That's the meaning of what it means to be to hear God twice. That He said it and I am quick to respond. That's what we call maturity in the relationship with God. And then number C, number D now, 3D, which is the last one, surrender to his great plan. His great plan, both for you and uh, around you. Your personal life and around you. God has a plan. And he's trying to do it in your life. It is arrogance for you to say you have your own opinion. When God is speaking, God told you this is the person to marry. You say, no. No, that, it doesn't fit into my plan. What plan? Hey, what plan? The Bible says some people will say, tomorrow we will do this and this and this. What if God takes your life before that tomorrow? Ah, ah. God is telling you this is the way you are arguing with God. He knows the plan. He has a plan over your life. And he has revealed it to you. Ah, ah. And your own plan is looking better to you. You are arguing with God. That's one of the heights of arrogance. It's one of the heights of arrogance. That you will argue with God on, on plan. And God says, okay, son, I want you to be my minister. I want you to preach the gospel. He said, no, no, I will be a, I will be a rich man. Okay. Lord that. God says stay in Nigeria. You say you, you are going to Canada. You are going to Canada. Do you know that there are beers in Canada? They are in Canada. You want to go to the US? Ah, you will see this. I saw a big, somebody carrying a big snake. That snake was as big as my thigh, like this. Somebody carried it you want to go to Canada I saw that in Canada I went to Manchester one day there was a dog as high as high as my chest and it was Mulo Emir Akpadinu of Kubi Kub Kekerekova Bajan and Shiri me by I saw Korea in Abududu. They call them racist dogs. The moment he saw me like this, he jumped off from his master to attack me. That man couldn't handle this, the dog again. He was begging it. Please, no, no. If you know, you have to get to me. So they told me, you have to get to me. You want to go to uh, uh, UK? 
Go on. Go on. Any call. Yeah, so this, this woman was going to work, give her do- a child to the mother, her own mother. That is the grandmother of the child. She went to work. By the time she came back, the dog of the grandmother assisting her child. He ate the child. Anybody in UK know the story. He's on the news. He was on the news when I was there at that time. So go to UK. Oh. God is saying stay here. If God wants you to be there, he will take care of you there. But if he didn't send you there, <laughs> have you heard that one before? <laughs> okay. Time has gone. I don't want to spend plenty of time. So you are going to pray from today. Even though my plans may look very good, they can never be as good as your cancer. From today, I will always seek to know your plan before taking any action. Can you turn that to prayer? I will find out your will before I take any action. I want to find out your plan for my life, your instruction, before I take any action. From today, because you are wiser than I am, your plans are better than my plans. Your desires are better than my desires. You even love me more than I love myself. From today, I will always seek your will. I will find out your plan before I take any action. In the name of Jesus, give me grace. And as soon as I know your wish, as I know your instructions, I will subscribe to your plan. As soon as I know that this is what you want me to do, I will do it, Lord. Can you pray? Ask for grace to be obedient to the divine purpose. Divine purpose. From today, whatever you want me to do, that's what I will do. You are wiser than I am. You have a better plan than my plan. I submit myself to your plan. I humble myself under your purpose, oh God. Because your purpose is better than my own. I subscribe to your will, Lord. I subscribe to your purpose in my life. Even all around me, in my family, in my nation, I submit to your plan. Even now, Lord, have your way in my life. Have your way in my family. Have your way in my business. Have your way in my ministry. Even now, have your way, Lord. Have your way in my life. Take charge. Take charge. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. From today, in my academics, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. We are still going to take that prayer once more. You know, when you are asking God to have his way, sometimes what God will say may not be, it may sound ridiculous to you. I, I think I must have told you before, when I was in my final year in the university, and I, I was about to register for the end of the session, and I, I went to ask God, what do you want me to do now? He said, let's start by you having a, an extra semester. Ah, that was a ridiculous instruction. I was already counting my days. I wanted to go and serve and do some other thing with my life. And here was God telling me to stay back for an extra semester. And I said, why? He said, because he wants, because he wants me to do. Sometimes God will ask you to do some things that are ridiculous. But he's wise. Tell somebody God is wise. Within that extra semester I did on campus, which I didn't need to do. You know, I had to go and apply to do extra semester to show you that I I didn't have to do that extra semester. I had to apply to register for uh, how many courses? I mean, for just one course in a whole semester. It's, It's on call for. All right? But within that three months period, God gave me the blueprint of my life. He showed it to me within that period because I decided to listen to his plan and got the picture of what he's talking about. 
So you are still going to pray. Even now, from today, have your way in my life. Have your way in my family. Have your way in my business. Can you pray that prayer before we close? From today, have your way in my life. Have your way, Lord. Rise up on your feet. Pray this prayer. Rise up your, on your feet and pray that prayer. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Oh Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Oh Lord, have your 